Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning we have been talking about musicals in general with particular reference to Hindi film cinema and we talked about the Hindi film great musicals and also the great artists from the Hindi film scenario. Today I am going to refer to as promised earlier to Hollywood musicals and what were the landmarks in the development of the musical genre. So, here are some of the names. The Broadway Melody is a movie, one of the foremost, one of the earliest films of this genre. Musicals are an important genre as you know. We will be talking about someone called Florence Zickfield who was a producer. Then we will be talking about the great artists, the great dancers. Um, you, rem you must uh, note that uh, dance is generally considered the domain um, of women, the female actors, but uh, how uh, a couple of uh, male performers change the perception about uh, um, dancing, about especially about men dancing. So, there is a whole lot of research done about the male dancers and the construct of masculinity there. So, we have the great performers such as male performers Jean Kelly, Fred Astaire um, and also Frank Sinatra. I will write the name on the board. Frank Sinatra, actor, singer, dancer. So, Jean Kelly, Frank Sinatra and uh, Mm, Fred Astaire. So, these are the men associated with the musical genres. Um, we also have uh, the great Gene Hagen from the film Singing in the Rain. So, not to confuse this Gene with this Gene. Um, other female artists include Ginger Rogers, Sid Shays and Judy Garland. So, these are the personalities we will be talking about. We will also talk about the great directors of musicals. So, Ernst Lubitsch who I have already referred to in one of my earlier lectures on uh, studio years and studio period in Hollywood cinema, Stanley Donnan and Vincent Manelli. So, these are the directors at least the key directors. We will also talk about the growth of Hollywood musicals from the tradition of American vaudeville and these are the uh, most renowned personalities and names. They were earlier associated with Broadway and then they made a move to the screen to Hollywood screen. Ira and George Gershwin, these are all songwriters and composers. So, Ira and George Gershwin, Rogers and Hart, Irving Berlin, Cole Post, uh, Porter and Oscar Hammerstein. So, these are the people, these are the names that we are going to refer to in today's lectures. Now, um, why musicals and what is the importance of or relevance of musicals? Uh, we have to know that uh, in uh, at least in early periods of or early years of Hollywood, filmmakers saw musicals as the most convenient way to give expression to their creativity. Now, be it in the form of um, set designs, choreography, costumes okay, and the way body would perform. So, there was musical was one of the uh, most uh, revered and most acceptable kind of channel through which artists give expression to their creativity. Uh, in Hollywood, the musicals were at the peak within the studio system of the 1930s to the 50s. We have been talking about the studio years, we have been talking about the golden age of 
Hollywood cinema. So, you should be aware of the studio system and musicals were an important part of that period. Now, each major studio had its trademark aesthetics. They, uh, we will be talking about the studio politics as well, but more than that it is important to know that like filmmaking, like film as in filmmaking we know that MGM was renowned for something, the great um, grand spectacles. If you remember what I told you in my earlier classes, more stars than in the sky above. So, that was MGM. Whereas, Warner Brothers existed on uh, some other philosophy, Paramount on something else, Columbia Picture on something else. So, Warner Brothers was known for gangster cinema, not MGM. So, each major studio had its trademark aesthetics. So, some of the greatest musicals of the period were produced and released from the MGM lot. They had their own sets of stars, dance directors and designers. A major advantage of making musicals was that this genre enabled the filmmakers to easily work around censorship. See, uh, when you do um, when you do a musical and just imagine the grand Hollywood kind of a musical in, in the early years, okay, in the 30s we are talking about. So, you did not have to worry about the heroine's costume, we are still talking about the time when Hayes code was in existence. So, Hayes code the censorship code. So, uh, it had certain restrictions, certain taboos on the way stars would be portrayed on screen, but in musicals you could work around the censorship code okay, by way of uh, body movement, gestures, uh, the kinds of uh, Indian do's that the uh, artist would uh, dabble in and also the kinds of costumes the stars and the dancers would wear. So, uh, they could get away with certain uh, by breaking certain kinds of limitations. The uh, history of American or Hollywood uh, musicals can be traced back to the notion of American vaudeville uh, and musicals grew out of the culture of incorporation of uh, that define American life after the civil war. So, American vaudeville was in existence after the civil war from the late uh, 19th century onwards. The development of vaudeville marked the beginning of popular entertainment, ma uh, entertainment accessible to all and that could be um, understood and afforded by all. And uh, uh, like cinema in its later years, vaudeville was also the uh, domain of the big business and was uh, dependent on the organizational efforts of a growing number of upper class workers, the bureaucrats, the industrialists. They appealed to these people, they were financed by these people. Okay, they, these people had the spending power, they could produce these things, they could also spend money to enjoy the show. So, vaudeville changed according to the changing taste of an urban middle class audience just like cinema and then soon business savvy showmen utilize development in industrialization and communication technologies. They created and controlled vast networks of theatre circuit, circuits and controlled popular American entertainment. So, musicals are marked on a screen by several terms, the operator, review, musical comedy, musical drama and the backstage musical. These are just names given to the kinds of musicals that prevailed. Now, uh, coming to backstage musicals, this is also a kind of musical uh, which uh, grew out of the tradition of the American vaudeville. So, um, one of the earliest or rather the foremost film uh, or the musical film uh, was uh, the 1929 the Broadway melody which invented the genre called the backstage musical. So, it is a musical genre within that 
the backstage musical you also remember that the jazz singer was the very first talking picture 1927 now the plot of backstage musicals involve the problems of putting on a show this is something very common in our films also you can relate to uh, uh, perhaps a number of films that you must have watched in any language within our own country so the problems of putting on a show the process includes the uh, the concept of the process of audition getting the right kinds of people for the show the rehearsals the gossip the bantering the backbiting uh, the financial hurdles some kinds of obstacles are put in the way and then the final show that is staged to a thunderous applause okay so that is of the formula of backstage music so entire process is put before you how how difficult it is or how challenging it is or how exciting it is to put up a show so uh, uh, needless to say there was a uh, plenty of singing and dancing during rehearsals as well as the show on screen and the actors would stage and dance and perform as if they are actually on a stage and we in the audience are um in a real theater watching these people perform just for us that was the impression given to us so um, trying to uh, perhaps break the the wall that exists between the cinema audience and uh, the actors now the broadway melody is also a notable film because the title as i have already told you broadway refers to new york's broadway a major source of hollywood musicals so it refers to something that is such an important landmark in american culture and therefore a very apt title the film featured lyrics by someone called arthur freed who joined mgm as a regular and also was instrumental in inducting a number of musical stars at the studio some of the greatest names from broadway were brought to hollywood these are the names cole porter the gershwins uh, roger and hammerstein irving berlin so these are the names if you go back to broadway if you are interested in a hollywood musical and the genre these are extremely important names if you watch classic hollywood films you may often come across these names on screen um the earlier musicals plot wise they had little to do with story or with plot enhancements okay so the the song and dance numbers were just thrown it thrown there characters would often break into songs uh, arbitrarily and randomly um not necessarily to push the narrative forward soon musicals got a european touch when artists from europe started to flood hollywood uh, we are talking about the late 30s early 40s and introduced the operetta style on american screen so now musicals changed they uh, they became a little more professional and classy one of the earliest directors to whom we credit um, the growth of the early musicals um, at least we are talking about the more sophisticated kinds of music musicals was ernest lubitsch um, he is credited with uh, four musicals in the early years of sound the love parade monte carlo the smiling lieutenant and one hour with you and these musicals help define what talking movies would be what musical genres would be lubish was uh, embraced with open arms by the uh, hollywood moguls and the famous lubish touch included his uh, felicity with actors his genius for concentrating their maximum amount of narrative information in a few carefully chosen shots and symbolic details and his masterful sense of ellipses you know presenting only the most important story point and leaving the rest to the view- viewer's imagination so what we are talking about um, 
uh, too much, uh, plenty of details, plenty of research would go in the way he would compose his shots, but he would also not tell the audience all what he was. He was just showing you and uh, uh, the audience also had to use their imagination. The same concepts, the same philosophy was applied for his musicals also. So, here enjoy the song Beyond the Blue Horizon from Lubitsch's Monte Carlo. The depression years, American depression which started the crash of the Wall Street in 1927, 1929 and continued till uh, the early years of the 1930s that decade. So, surprisingly or maybe not so surprisingly musicals were very popular during the financial crisis of the 30s perhaps because of their escapist element. See, uh, you go to a movie, you forget for two hours or so all your worries and problems and you lose yourself in the spectacle. So, music, musicals gave the audiences hope. It is not surprising that the greatest musicals and the mus and composers flourished during the uh, worst financial crisis in uh, the early years of this of the last century that is the great depression. A star that emerged during this decade was the child star Shirley Temple who starred in 11 films between 1934 and 36. She was a, a money ticket for the studio. Okay. She led the Fox studio out of financial problems and also brought hope to the audiences as well to the studios alike through her songs and performances. A mu movie musical that made history during the Great Dis uh, Depression was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the first full length animated feature which was a huge leap for both the film and musical industries. We move on now to talk about uh, someone who most people consider the greatest ever performer and dancer on screen on Hollywood screen Fred Astaire. Astaire formed the legendary partnership with Ginger Rogers at RKO studio and is considered the greatest dancer ever. Together they worked on films such as The Gay Divorcee, Top Hat, Roberta and Swing Time. After Ginger is, uh, uh, re retired prematurely, Astaire starred in several other films, successful films with uh, actresses such as Rita Hayworth, Sid Shays, Judy Garland and also Audrey Hepburn in films like The Band Wagon and Funny Face. So, a number of popular films starring Fred Astaire. Most Astaire and Ginger Roger films are read through the prism of sexual politics and ideology. So, gender ideology, gen gender politics. So, critics or film historians and scholars have done uh, a major amount of research on the sexual politics that was played out between uh, the performers on stage. Okay. So, that is something uh, uh, you know a topic or a discussion for some other class. So, here is a scene as a musical moment by Fred Astor. The MGM musicals are remarkable for the way the directors weave the songs and dances into the narrative. Now, in the films of Gene Kelly, Stanley Donen and Vincent Manley, music served to advance the story. The early musicals were rather simple and lacked the complexity or characterization of the later works of this genre. And uh, with, Jean, with the arrival of Gene Kelly, Stanley Donen and Vincent Manley, musicals uh, acquired a kind of respectability which they had not before. Now, another important name is Florence Zickfield. He was the most influential producer in the history of Broadway musicals and MGM paid homage to Zickfield in films such as The Great Zickfield, 
the Zegfeld Girl and Zegfeld Follies. Again, this also starred Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, two of the biggest products by MGM. MGM's other greats, uh, by greats I mean the great musicals include Any Get Your Gun, Guys and Dolls, Oklahoma, The King and I, South Pacific, West Side Story, My Fair Lady and of course, The Sound of Music. Judy Garland till date is remembered for her Somewhere Over the Rainbow song from The Wizard of Oz in 1939. This movie was directed by Victor Fleming. Now, um, uh, The Wizard of Oz is a fantastic tale about a Kansas farm girl named Dorothy and who gets magically carried off, spirited away to the land of Oz. Judy Garland was one of the most loved, most admired um, child star who also became a great leading lady of her times. Um, and acted in several great films, um, most of which were musicals. She is still remembered for her songs. She did Meet Me in St. Louis in 1944 and also matched Steps with Gene Kelly in The Pirate in 1947. Uh, she was nominated for the Oscar award in A Star Is born where she uh, sings the man that got away and those of you who are interested in a star is born this is a very um, it's a classic uh, movie about it's a love story and the story is or the plot is propelled through songs and dances so a third version of the film before judy garland there was earlier version also uh, but the third version had barbara streisand and many people feel that Ju Judy Garland's version is the best of all. Here is Judy Garland doing Somewhere Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. We have been talking about Gene Kelly. He is often compared to another great dancer that is Fred Astaire. Now, Gene Kelly has his own unique style. He was very urban, very modern, very sophisticated. He brought dance into real life in his films, performing largely in regular clothes and in common settings. Um, in Anchors Away, Kelly danced a duet with Jerry, that is a cartoon mouse, uh, a first feat, a first feat of its kind. He had sailors performing ballet moves in On the Town, in which he also starred with the great Frank Sinatra. He worked with directors, um, uh, directors such as Stanley Donen on uh, Singing in the Rain and also Vincent Manley uh, and where uh, he continued taking dance as an art form to greater heights with films such as An American in Paris. So, here is Jean Kelly in Cover Girl 1944. One of the greatest musicals ever made is Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. The film, uh, this was again a, an MGM film, it starred Howard Keel and Jane Powell and the story is about a backwoods man who meets a town girl and marries her and this motivates his six younger brothers to find wives for themselves. So, they kidnap six girls, they meet at a country fair um, and then love happens. So, the entire story again the plot is driven, propelled by great music, also great dance numbers. The film was directed by Stanley Donald. So, here is the farm scene, the country fair song and dance scene from Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. A film that most of you must be very well aware of, I am sure many of you have watched this film, The Sound of Music. This is a 1965 film starring Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer 
It is remarkable for its excellent score and is based on the life of the Von Trapp family who escaped from the Nazis in Austria uh, along with her children. The film was directed by Robert Wise and had music by Rogers and Hammerstein. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is a, a Howard Hawks movie starring Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe in the roles of showgirls who are off to Paris on a luxury ocean liner. The musical numbers include the classic Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend Marilyn Monroe song who also sang some great numbers in Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot. She was not just a great star, she was not just a beautiful actor, she was also a great performer and a very good singer. So, um, and uh, there are a number of uh, uh, songs and scores credited to Marilyn Munro. Again, we cannot complete this lecture without referring to Singing in the Rain, although I may have referred to this uh, film several times when I was uh, particularly talking about the studio years. So, this is a 1952 film, it is a musical spoof of Hollywood when talkies first replace silent films. The Gene Kelly and Gene Hagen appear as silent film stars who must make the transition to sound or lose their careers. The film is considered the greatest musical ever made. The unique quality of the film is that it spoofs the old Hollywood while still displaying a deep sense of nostalgia for it. Some of the memorable songs are Make Em Laugh, My Lucky Star, Broadway Melody and of course the title track. Here is a track from Singing in the Rain. My Fair Lady is uh, the Hollywood version of the Broadway hit of the same name based on Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. Rex Harrison here is Professor Higgins and Eliza Doolittle is played by Audrey Hepburn. Professor Higgins who is a distinguished prof uh, professor of phonetics sets out to make a lady of Eliza Doolittle. The music is by Ellen J. Lerner. Uh, here is this song. Songs and dances were integrated, although the film did not really have dances, okay, but dialogues were integrated in the songs or maybe it is the other way around. And here is uh, a beautiful song from My Fair Lady. A Hard Day's Night is uh, the Beatles movie, when we were talking about the British New Way, we have already re uh, referred to this film. It stars the Beatles as Beatles themselves and revolves around their hectic work schedule during a trip to London. The foursome demonstrate their excellence at music as well as comedy. So, there are plenty of favorite Beatles songs. The film had a documentary feel and was directed by Richard Lester. And another extremely popular film that won 10 Academy Awards uh, during this time is Robert Wise directed West Side Story. Again, this was a Broadway musical which was brought to uh, the Hollywood screen. Natalie Wood and Richard Bamer are the lovers in this story about rival gangs in New York ghetto where Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is relocated. The film was shot on uh, locations and had music by Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim. The film was, as I have already told you, a Broadway musical. Here is a song from West Side Story. Another popular genre, especially that is started from the 50s onwards, is the rock musical with the teen pictures uh, such as Elvis Presley's Jailhouse Rock. Now, Elvis has a star in a number of popular musicals and he was not just um, a superstar singer and a rock and roll artist, he was also a fairly successful movie star. So, and his movies were like uh, song and dance vehicles for him, they were made for Elvis. So, do not expect too much of a plot, but still they are quite popular, they remain popular mainly because of the music. 
another great film uh, uh, which uh, utilized rock and roll music at the, uh, during that time was The Girl Can't Help It. The 1955 teen picture Blackboard Jungle marked the rock and roll revolution by featuring uh, the hit number by Billy Haley and his comets Rock Around the Clock. So, here is the scene from Blackboard Jungle Rock Around the Clock. That was a landmark song which was later on used in other films also. Now, let us talk about American graffiti. We are moving towards the 70s now, the movie directed by George Lucas is an accurate picture of the American youth culture in the 60s. It is a nostalgic take on the 60s before the assassination of President J. F. Kennedy. It is about the experience of some high school seniors on the eve of leaving for college or military service. So, it is a coming of age film. The plot is episodic in structure and uh, the film is very ground breaking, it brims with nostalgic atmosphere and it has some of the best soundtracks sourced as well as original. The soundtrack in the film is peppered with Wolfman Jack's non-stop disc jockey show which is very crucial and very right because the film is set in those times when the radio was on every waking moment. So, the relevance and significance of that period is heightened because the radio was there all the time and would play uh, ceaselessly. An interesting musical of the 70s is uh, directed by Robert Altman. Now, we are talking about the American new wave directors and this is Nashville. It is set in Nashville uh, country and western music scene and is a panoramic reflection of America's joys, frustrations and also smugness and complacency. It has the movie too again has an episodic structure. Um, the story is unfolded through the eyes of 24 characters who eventually convene uh, at a Nashville political rally. So, they meet at a political rally and it is a criss cross between a musical um, fest music festival and a political rally. The film arrived at the intersection of two important periods in American history, the scandal of Watergate involving President Nixon and Vietnam War which reduced America's faith in its government. But then this was also a period when um, the country proceeded with celebrating its bicentennial celebrations. The Altman films recognizes the hypocrisy of celebrating the roots of a nation amidst such chaos. Nashville, the setting for the film is apt because it is the home of country music. The film depicts how over a course of five days a music festival and a political campaign cross paths. The actors were encouraged to improvise and work on their own musical materials. Um, the actors really shown in this film, particularly Keith Carradine and his song I Am Easy. Another great performer of this period is Barbara Streisand. She performed on Broadway in 1964 in Funny Girl. Uh, movie roles include Funny Girl for which she won the 1968 Best Actress Oscar. Also, The Way We Were, On A Clear da Day, You See Forever, Funny Lady and Yentl. Her range goes uh, from uh, comic to tragic, but her films work within the framework of traditional music. So, here is a song by Barbara Streisand, The Way We Were. I would also like to refer to country music. In the 70s and the 80s, country music increasingly found a place in Hollywood film soundtracks such as Five Easy Pieces, Honky Tonk Man and Tender Mercies. Major artists of this genre were Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. The 70s also witnessed an increase in rock musicals. Again, as we were talking about uh, the nostalgia as displayed in American graffiti. 
uh, and we also had the documentary types of rock musicals as well. For example, Woodstock and also Norman Jewson's Jesus Christ Superstar. So, they were uh, more or less like rock musicals as well as they had a documentary touch. An unforgettable movie of this period is Saturday Night Fever made in 1977. John Travolta stars as a young disco dancer in this film about a tough teenager from Brooklyn. In his poverty stricken life, the only moment of glory comes every Saturday night on the dance floor of a local disco. The music by the great Bee Gees set the standard for many years to come. Now, this is also a period um, when uh, musicals started losing their power after the debacle of uh, uh, a star studded Hello Dolly. The musical as a genre fell out of favor with the studios, um, but it still it remained it shown in bits and parts as we have already talked about this um, with films such as Saturday Night Fever and also John Travolta's Grease. We have already talked about Grease in one of our earlier classes. So, musicals uh, may be over, but we still get a glimpse of this genre occasionally in Hollywood films such as Evita, which was made in 96 starring Madonna in the title role along with Antonio Banderas. Again, Moulin Rouge was a blockbuster. Dream Girls, Mamma Mia, Nine, Chicago and Hairspray. I must mention Buzz Lerman's contribution towards generating interest in this genre particularly with Moulin Rouge which is a which is like an MTV version of an 1890 Paris, Paris in during the later part of the last decade of the 19th century. The film is a the film is a celebration of show business as well as the great musicals. Here is a scene from a song from Mamma Mia starring Piers Brosnan and Meryl Streep. So, as I was talking about, though musical as a genre uh, is not or has lost its steam in Hollywood, in our cinema it continues. So, thank you very much, we will meet for our next class.